Hi, welcome to Take 5, where we daily consider devotional thoughts from Oswald Chambers' book, My Utmost for His Highest. Today is August 28th, and the title of today's devotional is The Purpose of Prayer. Teach us to pray, Luke chapter 11, verse 1. The apostles were impressed by the prayer life of Christ, likely this coming from their observing the great amount of time he spent in prayer. Here in Luke chapter 11, one of them asks the Lord to teach them how to pray in the like manner that John the Baptist had taught his disciples. Chambers opens with, Prayer is not a normal part of the life of the natural man. This would certainly concur with a request made for Christ to teach them how to pray, for it's not an action that comes naturally to a person. It's not natural due to a person not having an innate relationship with God. The act of prayer denotes a belief in God which is not present in the natural man. He is not born with it. O.C. says, we hear it said that a person's life will suffer if he doesn't pray, but I question that. What will suffer is the life of the Son of God in him, which is nourished not by food, but by prayer. I believe that I've heard that expression before, and Chambers clarifies that it's not the person per se who suffers, but their growth and existence as a spiritual person. Continuing, when a person is born again from above, the life of the Son of God is born in him, and he can either starve or nourish that life. Prayer is the way that the life of God in us is nourished. Prayer is the means by which our relationship with God is grown. Dr. C. correctly says our common ideas regarding prayer are not found in the New Testament. We look upon prayer simply as a means of getting things for ourselves, but the biblical purpose of prayer is that we may get to know God himself. I paused to consider this and thought about notes I've made in the Gospel of Luke as to instances of Jesus praying. It shows as being quite often with the primary reason behind his prayer time being to maintain fellowship with God. It takes a moment to consider what Chambers next addresses, ask and you, and you will receive. We complain before God and sometimes we are apologetic or indifferent to him, but we actually ask him for very few things. Here's the point. We ask him for help in this or that situation or to provide something we believe we want, but do we ask him to grow us spiritually, to see life through his eyes? How sweeping and broad are your requests to God regarding our, your walk in him? O.C. continues, a child exhibits a magnificent boldness to ask. Our Lord said, unless you become as little children, ask and God will do. Give Jesus Christ the opportunity in the room to work. The problem is that no one will ever do this until he is at wit's end. Dr. Chambers now presents the common reason of people on, uh, people's only time to pray when everything seems to be falling apart. When a person is at wit's end, it no longer seems to be a cowardly thing to pray. In fact, it's the only way he can get in touch with the truth and the reality of God himself. Be yourself before God and present him with your problems, the very things that have brought you to your wit's end. But as long as you think of your as long as you think you are you are self-sufficient, you do not need to ask God for anything. Dr. C. does not chastise anyone for times of emergency prayer, but draws attention to the weakness of one's relationship with God if the only time they turn to God is when they are at, their, at the end of their rope. Another statement of Chambers in today's uh, devotional that may seem to contradict the thinking of many is to say that prayer changes things is not as close to the truth as saying prayer changes me and then I change things. God has established things so that prayer on the basis of redemption changes the way a person looks at things. Prayer is not a matter of changing things externally, but one of working miracles in a person's inner nature. So much discussion is found in those words, but we will leave it at saying that the most common thing that, people, that prayer changes is me. This is why there often are not immediate results to our prayer due to the fact that it takes time to change me and to mold me. 
And now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for its highest. Thanks for being here today. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.